What's up, guys? Welcome back to Big Yogi's Garage. Today, I got Justin Coffee. What's up, oh, Justin? What's up with you, my guy? How you doing, man? All right, blessed by the best, fam. Oh, that's good. I met this guy named Will at the gym. His name's Anthony or something. Mm -hmm. I was telling him about my podcast, and he told me, before I have any guests, he said, I should, just, I should <laughs> have Justin Coffee. He said that you have a great story. Can you tell me a little bit about your story, Justin? You're probably talking about me getting, getting shot, shot twice in the head. Oh, my God. You got shot twice in the head? Yes, sir, twice in the head. Okay, so but before we go too far on that story, um, I want to know like a little bit about your background and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about your childhood and your, childhood and your upbringing. Well, my childhood was, it was rough. Mm -hmm. I watched my mother having a severe nervous breakdown. She was born with mental illness and i watched her have a like a severe breakdown to where she would throw stuff at the wall in fact mm -hmm. she said she was hearing having hearing thoughts of killing herself which she was agreeing to she was gonna kill herself but then she had a heart had a thought about killing my killing me mm -hmm. and she said that's what when her when she heard when she heard the voice about killing myself she kind of reached out to get some help mm -hmm. and from then my father kind of stepped in and but he was a street guy on the street so it was only so much he was he he could do and mm -hmm. he would just take me to my grandmother's house okay and my grandmother's house is probably his mom, his mom. Yeah, yeah. His, his both of my grandmothers played a key for key role in my oh, life. Okay. You know, they was more parents. I had some good parents. They did the best they could. But my mm -hmm. grandparents were really the doing rock. land the groundwork. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then you're from here, Toledo. Yeah, born and raised. OK, so like so. So your parents, they were trying, but it was just it was a hard road. And they did. They probably didn't have the resources uh, to to, you know, so they 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 gave they they let your grandmas like really help you raise the and then uh your grandmas how did they they you lived at their house i stayed with one uh it was mm -hmm. it was not uh i stayed with my grandmother for a little bit my mother was going through i mm -hmm. think two weeks when she was going through what she was going through then my mother ended up coming back coming back to get me mm -hmm. i wanted to, i wanted to get to my dad i couldn't really understand what she was going through mm -hmm. and my dad was had a lot of money you know nice cars mm -hmm. so i wanted yeah. to get to be around him yeah but he was man enough and respectful enough, like I'm not gonna expose my son to the yeah, stuff yeah. I'm into, because he was out in the streets. Yeah, yeah. But if I'm keep acting out of my mom's house, my mama's just only so long, my mama gonna say, you got to go to your dad. Mm. And then how was the environment in the neighborhood, like with your friends and all that? Well, my mother stayed in a pretty cool neighborhood. Mm -hmm. My dad stayed like in the hood. Uh, mm. My grandmother stayed in a crib neighborhood, which oh, where I okay. kind of, that's when I got introduced to the gangs. Uh, okay, so how did you how did you get into the gang lifestyle and all that stuff? It was surrounded in this neighborhood. It was mm -hmm. this this neighborhood was infested with gang banging, and, and, okay. and, and it was kind of like if you wasn't a part of it, you know, you were going to get taken advantage of. Well, these guys would just jump jump cats for no reason. Mm -hmm. And I come from a known family, so the the family, the respect that my the the, my, the, the respect and the name that my family carries. Mm -hmm kind of kept me from a lot of stuff so but i wanted to be a part of this gang because i was i was still at hurt the stuff that my mother was going through mm -hmm. the lack of void that she was feeling because of her own personal uh her, her own personal struggles yeah. likewise the void from my father just being out in the streets there but not there in a sense mm -hmm. you know more so but he was he was a provider i'm gonna give him that my dad it was provider. always like you were searching one through yourself yeah searching for your parents even though they were there you still wanted you know like something, no, no, no. It's, it's hard because I had this, I had issues like that with my father. Mm -hmm. My father was always in prison and stuff like that. So like I was always searching. So that's why I ended up get, going down the wrong paths in life too. So, um, so like, so you got into the gang. How, did, how deep did you get into the gangs and all that? Were you pretty deep? Pretty deep. You got jumped in. I got jumped in. That. At first I was playing with it. Mm -hmm. Would have been considered like an off brand okay, <laughs> in the yeah. neighborhood, but I was it was it was this guy's birthday who they a, a dead homie over there who they mm -hmm. named the block after. Mm -hmm. It's crips everywhere, mm -hmm. so they just jumping people in, and I was already kind of associated hanging with guys that was more from the hood. Mm -hmm. So I get jumped in that day, and the moment I got jumped in, like fifteen dudes jumping, get up head, <laughs> swole. Mm -hmm. I tell myself I'm gonna make this gang the best gang in America. Yeah, you felt you felt a pride of like something something like. Like you were part of something part of special. Something. There huh? you go. Yes, sir. What 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 do people have confused about gangs? Like what do, you know how some people look at gangs? What what do you see like that people maybe from the outside looking in don't see? Just I, I don't that that it is some of these kids. There's a lot of kids that join mm -hmm. gangs. 
is that that's family, man. Like, yeah. you know, I can still, I, I've been out to gangs since 06, mm -hmm. but I can still go back over there and get treated like family. Yeah. So when you have a kid that's not, that the mother may be on drugs or no family that's really putting putting attention to this kid or showing them the love, but then you have a neighborhood that's embracing them, accepting them, and mm -hmm. loving them. Yeah. I think that's the side that's missed. Yeah. And does that come with uh, a protection too from other people too? Like, say I'm in a gang, but someone wants to mess with me, I got, you know, yeah, you they got protect. These, absolutely. You know? So you not only have a family, but you have like protection and like just in case anybody wants to hurt you or, you know, just to have numbers, you know what I mean? So I, I think that's why a lot of these kids, um, like you said, they're struggling at home or something and they, they go into that, into the gang life. Yes, sir. Is that something that you've seen uh, growing up? Most definitely. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, so can you describe to me, uh, can you describe to me a little bit of what led to you getting shot two times and all that stuff in your head and all that? Or that, that night, or I don't know how you, tell me a little bit about that. How like, did that lead up to Like that? I told you, uh, <laughs> I wanted to make it the best gang in America. Okay. And of course, doing that, you got to go hard, you know, mm -hmm. on the other side. I was I was like a live wire, man. Like okay. the guys joke now, like, man, we couldn't go nowhere with this dude. Yeah. Because I was gonna rep that gang to the fullest. And it was a gang in particular that we was fighting a lot over the years. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that the older guys came to them, the older homies came to mm -hmm. them and was like, Y'all gotta quit letting these little dudes come through here. Mm -hmm. And it was a target on my back from that moment to kinda of take my life. Yeah, someone gave the green light, that's what they call it. So one night, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So this, the night leading up to getting shot, like I say, it was so much back and forth. You're talking about probably five to six years of us just fighting. Wherever we see each other, mm -hmm. this is the side of time we fight. And to the point where I would like ride through their neighborhood, scream, scream, screaming, crip, you know, disrespecting their neighborhood. Oh, just just yeah. real wild. Because you wanted the beef. Absolutely. You weren't like running, you wanted it. It was like a high, man. Oh, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't really mess around, smoke here and there, drunk yeah. here and there. But that that gang banging and fighting was like my high. Yeah, that's crazy. So the, how did so what where did that, how, how did that go? Okay, so, so what's next? Thanksgiving night. Now I'm 20. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. Remember this? The Thanksgiving. I wake up. Uh, a friend of mine called me like, "What are we drinking today, cuz?" Mm -hmm. I'm like, "We gonna drink some Hennessy." Mm -hmm. So I drop, I got my family, my uncle and my little cousin with me. I go drop my uncle off at a house. A friend of mine that was at the house get in the car. My right hand man calling mm -hmm. me. Man, come pick me up, cuz. So I go pick him up. I'm, I'm drinking, so I'm like, drive, cuz. Mm -hmm. But before I go pick him up, I had got into it with some guys at the gas station. Mm -hmm. But the police is in there. So I tell the, uh, the, the dude, like, nigga, don't jump stupid because the police in here. Mm -hmm. But I'm fur I'm furious because I but like I see we didn't been into with these guys so much as my get tell my dude to drive but as he's driving I'm like man ride cuz ride out sticking mm -hmm. I just got into it with the bloods mm -hmm. it's Thanksgiving we ride out there when you see nobody turn one street see one dude on the bike I get to throw on some gang signs at him he throw to his gang sign but then you hear his gun you hear bullets just ringing out through the car I hear mm -hmm. I can't see nothing at this moment. But I hear them in the background, oh, not my nigga, somebody gonna die tonight. So my dude just like, Jay, you cool, you cool, you cool? I'm like, get me to the hospital, get me to the hospital. Damn. Get me to the hospital. He gets me to the hospital, they pull me out of the car, I tell him like, man, hey, Faye, bro, call my dad. I wake up, I don't know how many days later, uh, only to find out that I was shot twice in the head. Now, the, the, the killing part of that is that the night I get shot, the doctors tell the police officers he'll be dead in the morning. It's going to be another homicide. Mm. He'll be dead in the morning. By the grace of God, I wasn't dead, obviously. Mm -hmm. The doctors go to my parents and say, we got, or the surgeon says, we got two options. I can do the surgery, but it's a possibility he can die in surgery. Mm -hmm. If I don't do the surgery, he's brain dead. They say go to surgery. Mm -hmm. What the surgeon didn't tell them was I had a 90% chance of dying in surgery, a 2% chance of living. Damn. Pull through it, come through the surgery. I'm like, what happened? They're like, you got shot. I'm like, but what? You got shot with a nine. The oh. surgeon is telling me, uh, well, the doctor is telling me that, you know, you, you we took a portion of your brain out. You know, you're going to have seizures. Mm -hmm. I get up, I get out to bed, my baby, my, my daughter's mother in there. I get up, 
out the bed, try to walk far straight down, mm -hmm. head big as a modern building, my head already big, <laughs> it was mm -hmm. swollen, man, staples all around my head. Damn. And they telling me that a portion of my brain is gone, and that really, that was more hurt, that, that, that was more painful mm -hmm. about that than the bullets. Like a piece of my brain gone, yeah. you're not gonna be able to remember things, and you're gonna have seizures now. Yeah. So then after that, then, man, you're like a miracle then, bro. You're really a miracle because you got to understand, bro, you only had, what, 2%? 2% chance. 2% chance. Like, so that means that you barely made it. So you got to look at life like it's like it's like you're reborn, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, like, man, that's just, you, you probably, you're probably you probably in some kind of medical book at the hospital because, like, things like when, when someone goes through that, like a head trauma like that, like a, like, gun two gunshot wounds in your head bro like like automatic that's automatic people think people get shot in their leg and they think they're gonna die you know what i mean mm. so automatically they thought you were gonna die so whatever procedures they did they had to record uh like all the doctors they had to record it mm. and you're probably in some medical book in there of mm. how to i swear because i've i've read into some of this stuff how to take care of a head wound of that so i'm sure because that doesn't happen every day. Yes, sir. Most people that that happens to die. So God saved you, bro. No, no doubt, big like bro. God, like God saved you 100%. How did this experience, how did that experience like make you like change your whole life? What did that do for you? If I can be all the way real with you, big bro, at, mm -hmm. at first I, it didn't change. I was ready to go ride. Oh, for you, us, know, you know the rules of the streets. Like, you know, I gotta, I gotta get some get back. Mm -hmm. But in the process of trying to do that, and friends was coming to me, like, how you want to do it? You want to torture mm -hmm. this dude? We can do X, Y, and Z. Oh, so you knew the dude, everything? No, I didn't. I oh. didn't know. But it was it was circulate, the streets talking, words yeah, yeah, coming yeah. out, saying it was, but you really didn't know who. And, I, yeah, and yeah. I was into it with so many guys from that side of town. But I wanted to ride, but I, it, was a, it was a piece of me, though, that was I want to change, too. Mm -hmm. For the first time, probably since 13 from, or 14, rather, when I was jumped in, that I'm like, man, this probably ain't the best route. Mm -hmm. But I still wanted to ride, though. So <laughs> after you recovered from your, you still like went right back into the game? Went right like, back to it. Because uh, I'm looking, how I'm looking at it, big bro, like they yeah. done a piece of my brain gone. Yeah. They got a bullet, a bullet, still, bullet still in my skull. That yeah. would have moved that much more. I would have been paralyzed from the neck down. When I seen my grandmother and seeing how hurt she was yeah. from seeing me, I was moving slow and I had lost a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I got to kill somebody, you know, from, from not just from what you did to me, but from the pain y'all caused this woman who yeah. I love dearly. Yeah. So that's what you, you really thought in your mind that you had to go find that guy and kill him. And you guys play with guns that, that deep, like, cause I, I know you got shot twice in your head, but you also, your gang was like gun heavy and all that. No, at the time, not really. No. You know, you know, you guys have guns. There was guns around, yeah. but it wasn't like it is today. Like these yeah, kids yeah. are just shooting, no fighting. We was more so with these. That's what know? I was wondering because when I was growing up, we were in gangs and stuff like that. But we weren't. I wasn't seeing gun heavy gangs. It was more like you know. But to get shot twice in the head, that had to have been. They really, they really was after you that day. Did did anybody else get shot in the car? No, the driver he got grazed. Oh, he just so got you're grazed. the only one that got people, shot. Yeah, four and people how, in the car. How long did you re have to recover? How long was it before you got back into the gang and all that? I, well, I got shot Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I got out of the hospital December 19th. And you was right back at it two months later? <laughs> yes, sir. Dang. And then what led up to you stop? How, how did you end up finally getting out of that? What, what led to that? I went to, uh, I, I started going, I went to a church service. Of course, you mm -hmm. get shot and have a near death that experience. Yeah, yeah. You want to give some thanks to God. Of course. So I go to a New Year's Eve service mm -hmm. and they call me to the front. That same year? The same year. That was 05, so okay. coming into 06. Okay. They call me to the front and just say purpose. Okay. And that, that so they say say purpose then my daughter was born a month later february 1st mm -hmm. my okay. mother sets up something for her to get christened i go there the lady stopped the service and say young man this purpose on you that's the second time i heard purpose. <laughs> and i remember uh sitting on the block one day after being shot and mm -hmm. like this can't be it you know mm -hmm. i'm just watching dudes sell dope you know uh just it's a cycle that's getting us nowhere. And I'm like, this can't be it. But then that the purpose, that second time I heard purpose, mm -hmm. I guess the third time's the charm. My mother, like, I know these people that can help you get a job. Mm -hmm. 
they work with people with disabilities get job obviously got qualified for it from the gunshot wounds okay i go to the meeting i'm just there for a job the mm -hmm. man like you know what i can get you a job but i want to scrap this he said for you look you come here man you look at me in my eyes you know you're a young guy for you to be shot twice in the head there's something something more to your life mm -hmm. it's purpose on your life <laughs> i guess the third time's a charm yeah. but he like i can get you a job but i want to introduce introduce you to this man who yeah. works with the worst of the worst mm -hmm. Big brother, I'm just trying to get the job. I don't care no no, no meeting or some dude. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm just trying to get the job yeah. though. I go to the uh, he set up the meeting. I go to it as him, a guy from Pittsburgh, a younger guy my age in there. The younger guy from my my age says, man, your family tired of praying for you, man. If you don't get out these streets, man, you're gonna die. The other guy who he wanted me to meet is there. He like, I'm honored to meet you. <laughs> I'm looking at this dude like, huh? <laughs> He like, I'm honored to meet you. Mm. He said, man, for you to get shot twice in your head and still be breathing, do you yeah. know what God can really do for you? Do you know the purpose that's on your life? Yeah. So it clicked in. Yeah. He um, so he tells me that he has a meeting, or he has a, he has this group that he these guys meet every Thursdays, and it's geared to like going to the streets, getting mm. young men out the streets and the gangs yeah. and so forth. I'm still just trying to get the job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My mother, my mother took me to the barber shop one day. She's like, oh, the men got that meeting. I'm like, mom, I'm not going to that. Yeah. I got to get to the, no, you going. Yeah. <laughs> she pulled up in front of the place. I'm like, mama, but I, 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 she's like, no, you going. Out of respect for them, I get out and go. Yeah. The man is talking, the, the, the man is preaching, but it wasn't no corny type stuff. You know what I'm saying? It, wasn't, it seemed real, uh, and he was hitting on purpose. Okay. This guy happened to own a, um, some type of youth facility. Okay. Like for adolescents, wild, wild young men. Mm. So I'm not knowing this. Mind you, I don't know this at the time. I mm. go to the hood one day, go back to the house. Might have been drunk. I look in the mirror talking to myself, though, like I'm talking to some kids in the seaside, bro. Mm. The next week, the guy like, man, I, I want to expose my life to you. And I got this this facility. You want to come speak to the kids? I'm yeah. like, man, I was just in the mirror. Like, I was talking to my, I was just in the mirror Crazy. talking to myself. Big brother, I go speak there, give my story. The response from the kids, man, broke my heart. Yeah. One little dude tell me I'm his inspiration. Yeah. And I'm like, this is my purpose right here. Yeah. And that's how you ended up like mentoring kids and all that. That's how I got into them. Yeah. So I was gonna ask you. I was going to ask you, uh, what, so what do you do for mentoring kids and juvenile? Tell me a little bit about where that led into. Oh, Will. Okay, yeah. Will called me one day. Where uh -huh. you work? Where you gigging at? Because I was speaking in schools, speaking in um, churches, youth events. You're speaking throughout the city, mm -hmm. but not employed nowhere because I got a felony. Okay. Will called me. Where you gigging at, bro? Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I, I'm looking for a job. He's like, man, yeah. he's like, this lady want me to work for this youth program. But I ain't got the time, bro. You yeah. know, and I know you committed to that. Uh, my sister worked there. I'm going to give you the info. Okay. Now, I done had a lot of plugs and jobs. I did a lot with the youth with jobs, but the felony blocked it. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like, this might be similar situation. Yeah. The I called a number, go drop a resume off. The lady sets up an interview. She says, I usually don't do this, but uh, you got the job. Yeah. Forget this. <laughs> she kind of scrapped the interview yeah. about the job question and just started to ask me personal questions. Okay. This place works with, uh, they, they, they partner with the juvenile system, the jails, and mm -hmm. kids that's coming out of uh, some serious cases. You know, I had a mentor a little dude that killed somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, some more serious cases, but yeah, they yeah. fresh out of jail. Okay, so do you help mentor them? And I meet with them. I got four or five right now, and I mentor with them. I meet them with one just got killed, you know, bless so, yeah. Yeah, man. I, I meet with them 10 hours a week, one, individually 10 hours a week. Yeah, this, 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 it's a lot of gun violence in the city, man. When you, I don't know what to do, but I'm, I'm trying. I don't, I'm, I, I, I'm thinking like this podcast is going to do something, or yes, sir. I'm doing something. I don't know what to do, but... <sighs> It's crazy out here, man. It's fucked up. I no wanted idea, to ask bro. you about um like uh like uh challenges with the like we're talking about these kids, the challenges. Like what do you think we need to do with these kids, like to get them off the streets to like what's going on with these kids 
Is it the parenting? Is it like, is there not enough things to do? What is it? A combination of all of it. I think parenting, you know, it plays a role as well. Yeah. Not a lot to do. And then, man, we got to be visible. You know, mm-hmm. like a lot of these older cats in these hoods, man, they're scared of these kids. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Or, or they, or they, or they befriending them. Yeah. You know, not really showing them, you know, a better way. You know, when I was younger, man, a lot of the older cats, like I say, my dad's a street dude, been in the streets all my life, but he mm-hmm. never provoked me to get in the streets. Yeah, try to you know stir me a different way, and I think that's the difference now. A lot of the old heads, these mm-hmm. older men that they have around, are not talking them out of going to the streets they more so inviting them to it or participating yeah. with them okay so i and i saw parenting you know the parenting so i like you say a combination of all of that combination of all that yeah instead of instead of instead of trying to tell them hey man that's not good they're like hey let's go hang out let's smoke yeah. a blunt let's let's go kick it let's, yeah like I, I i've changed in the last couple of years i've been more of a like a motivator you know, I'm ch- I'm telling people, hey man, you shouldn't do that. You should do this. You should quit this. You should yeah, quit that. You, big, you should try to work out. You should try. And I don't even know why. It just became like one day I was just at a uh, I was at a at a uh, baseball game, and the team was down. And I was like, man, we got to get out there. And I started motivating. I started like, and then from from that day on, it just happened like something clicked on me that I want to be more of a like because instead of being quiet, like you watching these kids. You keep watching all these people doing things bad, doing things bad. And me, I know, like, that's wrong. I need to stand up. I need to stand up and tell them it's bad because nobody else is. So that's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to work on that. Sometimes I still get nervous about saying the things I really want to say online, on camera. Sometimes I cuss a lot. But I just want to get through to these young men, man. We need people like us to talk, to tell our story. We need to know that we went to prison and we got out and we did something different, you know? No, that's real spill, man. Because cause, uh, cause a, a large percent of it, like men, is not, a lot of these, bro, big bro, probably not, out of all the men, young men that I mentor, 90% of the fathers is absent. Mm-hmm. You know, so men is uh, men like yourself, myself, we, we need to be visible. Because mm-hmm. when we lost fatherhood, we lost neighborhood. Yeah. And that's why I want to be. I want to I got a, I got kids myself and I hope my kids look up to me, but I want all the kids look up yes, to sir, me. 100. I want all the young men to say, look, Yogi's a good dad, a good husband. He works out. He eats healthy. He's helping people grow their business. He's helping people on the podcast. I I'm doing like, OK, this is what I did when I got out of prison. I started looking on social media and I started to like I want to get a little bit of this guy. I like what he does. I like what he does. I like what he does. Yes, like just guys from here, from Toledo, just random guys, just my own friends from my own family. I love that he has a great business. I want a good, good business. I love that what he does online. I love how much he promotes his business. I love how this guy does this yes, workout. On, and I, I took the best from this guy. And I took the best from this guy. And I took the best. And I'm trying to mold the guy that I wanted every that i wanted to look up to like i'm trying to become the guy that i want to look up to by me becoming him i think i can get these young men to say i want to be a good husband i want to be a good leader i want to be a a good man to provide for my neighborhood for my community that's what i'm trying to lead by example that's is that is that do you feel like that's a good way to lead by example or is it just all talk no, I think that's. I think leading by example. Everything you said, I totally agree with. Yeah. And it's, necess- and it's, it's necessary. Yeah, we we need to we need to be out here. So okay, so now okay now now I I want to I've been working on doing this because I want to do like you said public speaking, community activism, and uh, can you tell me a little bit about all that stuff and how that how you led up to all that stuff? Well, of course, speaking with the kids come okay. through. Uh, meeting the guy. Uh, I, 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 once I changed my life, I started to, I, my, my, this, this, the, all these ideas began, be, mm-hmm. began, began to come <laughs> to me, man, writing books and, yeah. and opening group centers and even working with the disabled. That's awesome, man. So it was just a lot of ideas that, yeah. uh, that, that, that came to me. So once you, once you got into that positive mindset, instead of that negative mindset, ideas just start rolling Started in. to flow. It it, it, it was, it was. I got into this just trying to work with kids, mm-hmm. you know, not knowing that it was activism inside of me, you know, yeah. uh, trying to, you're going hard for social issues, social mm-hmm. injustice, police brutality, 
you know, um, racism, which is a man-made barrier, you know, coming yeah. against those things that, that, that put us all back, you know, no yeah. matter the race. Um, so, like I say, that one uh, with God being my center mm -hmm. and tapping into a purpose, it was so much other things that began to flow. And I started to see that the, these other gifts and talents yeah. and ideas, they just came naturally. Yeah, God just sends you stuff. When you're doing good things, man, God sends you things. Yes, sir. He's like, here you go, here you go, here you go. I get good ideas all the time. I'm like, I wish I was, I wish there was <laughs> 10 of me so I can be like, hey, take a couple of these and take a couple of these. Man, it's beautiful. So your mindset sh shifted and then you start getting all these good ideas. And that's how, how it led all to this, like speaking as you speak at schools and like all that kind that, of stuff. They just was calling me. Yeah. They would call me. You know, the stories, you know, because yeah, your story is amazing. Story. Yeah, it's not like it's not like you did something little, <laughs> right, something right. crazy happening. But speaking, though, I just love to help people, man. Mm -hmm. Big brother, I, like I love to help help people, broken people, people that, mm. you know, that are in less fortunate situations. So when I was speaking, just see how it was, I was speaking at a school and it was all girls one time. Mm. And this little girl was back there crying. And she went from no gang, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But just to, just being, being a motivator, uh, yeah. and, and it's so contagious, motivation and, and, and positivity is so mm. contagious yeah. that it's, it's reaching over and transferring to this young lady yeah. and she's breaking down from things that she may have went through and it's now inspiring her to do better. So yeah. I just love just helping people. Yeah, that's awesome. So when you're out there speaking, what's your passion? What's like the message you're trying to get to that kid? Purpose. I'm real big on purpose. Purpose. I believe all of us, man, was sent here with a purpose and yeah. a gift. Yeah. And I, we're not here, and we, we, we were sitting here for a purpose, with a purpose, and we all have gifts and talents. Yeah. And I'm trying to draw out that gift and pull out your gift inside of you because if you, if you look at society, especially with these kids, they walking around aimlessly. Yeah. You know, no direction, no, uh, no sense of self-worth. So I'm trying to draw out your worth mm -hmm. and, and then attach it to this purpose that God sent you here to fulfill. Yeah. Yeah, because that that that's really big. Like I've been like on my podcast, like I always want everybody to, when they walk out of here, I want them to have a little bit more. I usually say goals and dreams, but I never really heard the purpose. Like mm -hmm. I use like you said it purpose. Oh, no. Like like that's a good one. I never really thought of it like that. But uh, I always ask people like their big goals and dreams and stuff because I want them to have bigger dreams when they walk out of here. Yes, you know, I'm a person. I love that kind of stuff. So can you give me, uh, we're, we're all talking about all the youth and stuff okay. like that. Can you give me some advice to give to a youth, like the, uh, going down the same road that you went down before your gunshot, before you getting shot and all that? Some advice for them. That if, for one, it's, 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 it's a lie, man. It's a lie. You, you know, we, we believe this lie, you know, uh, like, and what's funny to me, like these Lord, these these they men now um, we were teenagers mm -hmm. these young men that i was fighting and possibly wanted to kill mm -hmm. are some of the coolest dudes you know what yeah. i'm saying and then, and then we come from similar stories similar backgrounds yeah. similar pain that we went through so it's a lie that we believe in two in these streets yeah it's like you're killing your own Yo, your, yes sir your, some, it's like you're looking in the mirror and you're going to go shoot they do it in the mirror it's just a come different on, no, neighborhood. that's real a different story a different thing but it's just a different color really yes sir you like blue and he likes red. red yes sir you live on this street he lives on that street and then you're going to kill each other it's like looking in the mirror and shooting yourself in the face because really we're all in the same story Come on, no. we all we all live here in toledo just because i'm cuban and you're black doesn't mean anything That's we right. all grew up in the same yes, neighborhood we all there's nothing but drug dealers and bad influences and we had to like struggle and that's why we made these mistakes and that's why it, our environment led us to where we're at come on now yes, sir. and that's why we're leaders now because we weren't born leaders, but we became leaders. And that's when, when you were in the gang, you know what? There's one thing, you, you, you went in that gang, but you really was, you just wanted to have a purpose. That's why when you became the gang and you took over and you really wanted to like grow the gang and be, because you're a leader, bro. You wanted to take it to the top, but in any position, if you would have been born and you were like in the Johnson and Johnson family, they would have been like, hey, you were an automatic CEO. Like you would have had that, that automatic leader position. They would have been like, look, he's a good leader. And then you would have been boom, 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 all the way up in the, but just our environment. We're born, we're not part of the Johnson and Johnson family. Right. We're in the hood, we're in the east side. We're in the, where are you from, North, North End? Uh, not North End, you're from like, the- Like the west. West side, yeah. oh yeah, it's Crips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. North End is the blood. Yeah, the blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, 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 you were against the North End. Absolutely. Yeah, my, my bad. Um, 
But yeah, we grew up in those, and even them people right. in the North End. No, they're just talk, us. They're right. us. They're us, but in a different area. So that's why I, I, I feel like we need to, like, right now, advice from us is very important. Because advice from me and you, it's like, oh my God, you never know. Don't go to jail. Don't get shot. You need to take advice yeah, right now God. before yes, you sir. get into that position. Like, you could be a CEO. You could be a president. You could have your own business. Don't give up now. Don't lead to the wrong way. Like, I, ha I have a feeling that our message is, I, I, only, I only get 200, 300 views, whatever. But I know that we, me and you, can, like, like get to these kids, man, because these kids need grown men to tell them, like, there's more out here than just guns Come and on, gangs yes, and sir. stuff and drugs and all that. Like, oh, man. It's, okay. Okay. I, how, did, how did your story, your, 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 you know, getting shy, you know, the whole gang, everything, how did your story influence the work you do right now? You know what I see myself, man, I, I, and a lot of these young men, mm -hmm. and I, was, I broke down one day because I had left one of the little dudes. I'm like, wow. You know, uh, so a lot of them, as we say, it's a cycle. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of young men join gangs for similar reasons. Yeah. So for me, when I when I hear a little dude talking about he want to go bring harm to one, mm -hmm. or uh, one that's contemplating on joining the gang, yeah. I'll go back to when I joined the gang, the ending of the gang because gangs, man, have one. If you stand and you really gang banging, you gonna get shot or you going to jail. Yeah. You know that's just that's the streets you're gonna get, in general. You're gonna die. You're or gonna shot, die. That's yeah. right. The grave. You're gonna get shot a few times. You're gonna yeah. be in jail. You know if you're really out there in them streets for real. So. A lot of them pull from that story, but some of them, some are so, a lot of, we, we got this obsession with street life that I think is really a fad, man. It's really, mm -hmm. we shouldn't have this obsession because, you know, the world glorifies it, yeah. the rap music and so forth. Yeah, yeah. But it's something that shouldn't be glorified because it's sending kids to their grave. Yeah. You've never glorified that stuff at, like after like you changed not your at life, all. right? Uh, not, not at all. And it, and it was it's, 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 it's amazing because it was something that I glorified and you really glorified praised, lot, you know, yeah. that street life. But now I, you, you see the detriments, the, the detrimental impact that and a negative impact is it having on lives, man. I just went to a 15 year old funeral that was shot 10 times. Yeah. Here in Toledo? In Toledo. Damn. That's that kid they found and stuff? Man. I just don't understand, like, how it even gets to that point, man. Like, because they're only, they're young kids, right? Like, little young kids, like, getting to the point where they're, like, getting shot and stuff like that. It's just, like, we, we need to almost, like, have, like, some kind of, like, system where we can help out these young kids for, instead of having them rob somebody. Like, yes, have, like, a on, like, their own, like, little account their own little thing i know that this uh i'm helping this 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 nonprofit do this um this toledo's got talent mm -hmm. and they're they're from the north end and stuff like okay. that but um they're gonna do a talent show we're gonna have singers and dancers and stuff like that and then that mas and mas is gonna have a building in the north end and their kids are gonna have um like some kind of like uh, everybody there is going to have a joint account and some of the money is going to go into their joint account where they're going to ask for rides and ask for money for oh, cool. like stuff like that. So I think more of that, we Absolutely. need more of that for sure. I was going to ask you, how do you balance all your roles now? Because you do is church stuff, right? The church, the church uh, mentoring, job coaching. How do you balance all that? Tell me everything you do. Tell me everything you do. I do the minister. Uh -huh. uh, um, which is not traditional okay. <laughs> minister. I want to start it out there. Uh, um, job coach. Mm -hmm. I job coach individuals with mental illness and developmental disabilities. Okay. I work in a group hall with and two men that have uh, severe um, um, dyslexia. I can't remember the exact diagnosis, mm -hmm. but you know have challenges. Yeah, yeah. And likewise, we're youth advocate. Do the mentoring. And you have a family and kids. Yeah, my now? daughter. I full custody. My daughter, two daughters. One I'm uh, lives with me. Okay. And, and one I take care of. Another one I take care of. Yeah. So how do you balance life and like how like it's hard for me to balance between my life, my business, my working out. Sometimes I get like a little stressed out. How do you balance the stress that comes with that? Keeping God first. My faith. My faith is strong. Mm -hmm. And one thing, I, like when I get a lot of phone calls, like I was grieving these little boys. You know, mm -hmm. passing is, and I was getting phone calls from yeah. folks, uh, and I had to remind myself, like, you still, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm placed here to yeah. be a blessing. 
So yeah. just knowing that this is my purpose, like this is what I'm sent here to do. Yeah. And I want to be the best at it. You know, I want I want to be I want to I want to deliver my best, not the not best far as I want to be, be better than you, but mm -hmm. I want to be the best being myself and be the and, and deliver the best to whomever it is, whatever yeah. role that I may be playing that day. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, man, about that kid, because I you said he you were mentored in him. Yeah, yeah. So that was like that hit you personal. Yeah, it did. did. Yeah. Like it was my own son, man. It yeah, broke my heart. That's crazy, man. That I, I wouldn't even I didn't even know how to so so who who so who's your role models? Who's your mentors? I got a uh like growing up was the gang was and the all gang. that, right? Well, I looked up to my father, still looking at my, my father. My yeah. father's a solid dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was he was in the streets, but he was a, he's a solid dude, mm -hmm. you know, likable cat. Uh, yeah. uh so I would say um got a guy from New York, an mm -hmm. older guy, mm -hmm. you know, uh talked to him here and there. Uh and I and I a lot, I, I'll follow somebody like you say. I'll, I'll look at somebody like yourself. And, yeah, yeah. You know, find somebody on the net. You know, mm -hmm. and just and just see their strengths and gifts and pull from them. Yeah, yeah. And I pull from you too, man. Oh, one hundred. Like ever since, ever since uh, Will uh, told me who you were, I didn't. He didn't even tell me a story. I just I, I found you. I started following you, and I I'm like, man, I like what he's saying. I like what the post. I love all that stuff that you say. Like when you talk about. Uh, God and this and the, whatever you oh, whatever God. you put out there, man. I love that stuff because I believe that everything that you that goes into your ears and everything you see comes out your mouth. Come on now, yes sir. Like that's all I believe. So so if you feed yourself positive things, so every time you write something and I read it, I record it, I listen to it. Anytime if you make a video, or whatever, I listen to it. Boom, and then then that's what comes out because. The what we feed ourselves is what we produce. Yes, a real spill. Yeah, your input determines your output. That, that's a real talk. Yeah. Cause uh, you know, I've I'm transforming my life. I'm becoming a whole different person. Yeah, I'm you. not the person I was last year. Mm -hmm. Like my whole person. Like people have to start meeting the whole new me. Like I'm the new. This is Big Yogi. I'm the new Big Yogi. I'm a motivator. I'm a I I I'm I'm trying to help people grow their businesses. I want to be an influencer. I even I always used to say I'm not an influencer. <laughs> I'm not an influencer. I'm a content creator. I used to tell that to people. Okay. I'm switching it. Today's the first day I am an influencer. Well, come on now. Yes, I'm sir, influencing right. these young men to become a better leaders in their community, to become so to, if they have a little girlfriend, I want them to be a faithful boyfriend. Come on now. Yes, I sir. want them to have wives, I want them to have kids. I want community i want us to stick together i don't want that dividing from the east side the north and the west come side on, no bro. i want us to stick together to come on each other's podcasts i want these kids to have podcasts i want you to have a podcast i want to be able to come on your podcast so we can talk about you can have other people and and i can be a guest on your podcast i want that so we can all come together and talk and grow and tell the truth not all this media they just tell us what they want us to know. Yes, sir. We need to speak the truth about our community, about what's going on. We need to make sure these kids know, like, we're here. We're grown men. You can reach out to me. You can call me. You can be on my podcast. I don't care what you're going through. You got a story? Come on. Let's go. You can write a book. Don't be messing around. Don't be stealing. Come to me. Come to him. Come to, Jen come to Justin. We can help you. We can. I, I just. I just think that if we really, really, really want to help these kids, we got to tell them, "Come on, man. Yes, sir. Holler at me. Come on, dog. Because like these kids, they don't know. They think, "Oh, man, Yogi, he's just like doing his podcast. He's probably come on, man." And then I want to have a gym. I want to open up a gym so we can like maybe I can go to the east side and just work out with a bunch of kids. I don't. I don't have the money to do none of that. But I got so many dreams that I wish I could do everything. Do you? <laughs> Now that I talk about my gym and stuff, do you work out? Do you do anything health and fitness wise or anything like no, that? No, man. Seeing these muscles, you got you and Big Wheel, man. Yeah. And I'm this line going. I'm about to go bald. I'm trying. I want to put on some yeah. <laughs> some muscles. I don't. I got a membership, Big Bro, yeah. but I need to start going, man. Yeah. I just ever since I started working out, I noticed that when you start, uh, like the discipline of changing your body leads to disciplines in different other mm, areas yes, so like if you wake up every morning and you go to the gym it doesn't matter what you do you don't got to be the strongest man in the gym no doubt you just go there you just run a little bit do your little thing that shows your body discipline i get up i go and work out i take cold showers my i don't want to take cold showers i say shut up brain i get in there and i take a cold shower mm. just to get my body nice and cool cool when i leave the gym i'm not sweating and stuff yeah, like no that doubt. and it gives you benefits I, I believe that 
that we need muscle because I believe that all this is like a balloon, right? We have a, our skin is like a balloon. Mm -hmm. Our bones are just in there, right? If we don't build the muscle that holds this bone, like this ligament to this ligament, mm -hmm. so that muscle, we have to build it. Because if not, when we get in our 70s, 80s and stuff, we won't have That's no so. muscle. So yeah. we'll have all these joint pain. So because like joint pain is created by our muscle deteriorating. Mm. So the longer that we don't work out, the more we're going to let our muscles deteriorate. And we don't got to be the strongest men in the world. We just got to do, you don't even got to do nothing. All you got to do is do push-ups, dips, uh, pull-ups, and squats. Got you. That's all you got to do. You do a few sets of that and you build your muscle every day. If you're not building your muscle every day, you're going to end up losing muscle. And when you get older, you're going to have a lot of back pain, joint pains, leg pain, knee pains, every joint's going to hurt. Yeah. I've learned that, and I've learned this all through the last year. This is something that I'm learning, So I, and when people come on my podcast, I want to talk to, to everybody a little bit about health and fitness, yeah, so they can maybe, oh, okay, Yogi, maybe they can open their eyes a little bit more and um, take care of their body, because we're getting older, pretty soon I'm 43, pretty soon I'm going to be 50, mm -hmm. 60, 70. I want to live as as much as I can. No you know? real spill, yes sir. Yeah, so uh, so I if you don't work out, I reckon you got that membership. Don't let that money go to waste. No, I got, I got you. <laughs> yeah, and then okay, okay. Looking back, what is your proudest moment of your of all this journey so far? I know there's still going to be more stuff coming up, but so far, what is your proudest moment? That's a load of question, man. Uh, well, I mean, just give me one. I'm sure there's a lot of them. That's a load of question. Proudest moment. It could be anything. Your kids. I would have to say, um, my daughter, my mama, my gr mm. my grandmother who did yeah. live to see one of them did live to see my change, and my father, my family seeing the man that I'm am today. Yeah. <laughs> I spoke at a school one day, and the guy that was my mentor at the time, I'm 20. It was like a, like a mentor to me. Mm -hmm. My auntie was in there, and she broke down. And she it was tears of joy though, and he like, man, you must have really been <laughs> wild for your auntie to be uh, mm -hmm. caught crying. Like so, the, so the, the impact that I have in my family's life is probably my my greatest um, my greatest accomplishment. That's good, man, I, and and I'm proud of you, man. And I just met you, man, but oh, I yes, I really am proud of you. One hundred percent, I'm proud of you because there's it was so easy. You you could have just kept going in that route. You could have win and and kept fighting and shot at that guy. And right now you would be in jail for life. And we would have missed out on all this. We would have missed out on a great man. So that's why God saved your life. God saved your life because, like you said, you do have purpose in this life, Justin. You have a purpose. that you, Your purpose is to help these young men in Toledo mm -hmm. or wherever you go. Anywhere in, in the whole world that you're going to go, anywhere you're going to go, you're going to help people because God saved your life for that. Yes, sir. There's no other reason. If, if, if he wanted you to stay in the gang, he wouldn't have saved your life. That's right. He would have just let you die right there. If he knew... I mean, I don't know, but I'm saying if God knew that you were going to keep going in that gang and, and live that gang life, he would have just said, all right, man, we're done with this guy. But he no, wasn't done talk. with you. He's not done with you. So now this is a question that I ask every single person. My last question at my podcast every week, what is your future goals and your big dreams, Justin, for you? Well, that's another load of questions. <laughs> I want to put a church in, in the three cities that's not... Uh... That's not a traditional church that's really serving the community. Okay. That's not looking to take, but looking to give. Okay. Also, start a youth, uh, a youth program, after school program mm -hmm. to kind of help parents, you know, do the stuff that help the parents, likewise help the teachers, because the teachers can't really address mm -hmm. other issues outside of education. Yeah. So to kind of to, to be partner with the school and help address some of those, the mm -hmm. mental illness and uh, gang issues, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I want to open a group home, yeah. you know, for the, uh, the, um, uh, those with developmental disability. Cause when I was in that hospital on a diaper mm -hmm. and I had a brain infection a few years ago, I seen what if I, I felt experienced, what it feels like oh. to be a person that may have a disability, but you out in this world and this world is moving so fast yeah. and you're moving at a slow pace yeah. and the world can't really know how to handle you and, and raise awareness to uh, those with developmental disabilities and mm -hmm. to make their world the best that we possibly can. Yeah. And to get as many dudes out these gangs as I possibly can, man, yeah. and, really, and do something and, and really, out of all of the murders, bro, from California to New York, the, mm -hmm. you know, 
all the, the incarceration, there's not really things. There's not really things that's consistently this 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 play. There's things and um and now in province and so forth out there. And I don't want to take no shine away from nobody, mm -hmm. but really just want to start something consi that's consistent, man, and, and and has their heart in the right place to go towards helping men mm -hmm. get out these streets. Yeah. That's a really good, that's a really good dreams and goals, man. I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Thank no, you no so much, you, man. And then I want to help you promote any other, uh, any other of your other stuff. If you ever have anything that you want to bring up, contact me and we'll set up another podcast and I'll help you promote any kind of events or any, uh, if you ever have any of that stuff in the future, okay. come holler at me and we can work together. Well, I got you, big yogi. Right. Much love. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, I appreciate you. All right, guys, see you next week on Big Yogi's Garage.